Jeffries as Marion Kirby, the ghostess with the mostest. Robert Sterling as George Kirby, that most sportive spirit. And Leo G. Carroll, host to said ghosts as... Topper. for you. I always seem to be falling over things. Perhaps if you go where you're looking. Where's Henrietta? She's in her room. Why? What's up? He's coming. Who is? <laughs> Neil, stop that and go away. Oh, give him the paper, Topper. I will not. <laughs> Don't be stingy. Give it to him. Let him get his own paper. What are you so irritable about today? It's bad enough living with two human ghosts. Without having an animal ghost who steals papers. Oh, he won't steal it. Just trying to show you the new trick we taught him. What trick? We taught him to fetch your paper every morning and bring it to you in his teeth. I'm quite capable of fetching my own paper without getting teeth marks all over it. Oh, he won't hurt it. Isn't he cute? Neil, come back here. I thought he was supposed to bring the paper to me. Oh, we haven't thought of that part of the trick yet. Oh, for heaven's sake. Oh, don't be unreasonable, Topper. You can't expect a dumb animal to learn as fast as you can. But I want my paper. Oh, I'll go get you one. Say, who's Thelma? Thelma Gibney? She's Henrietta's closest friend. What does she do? What does she do? Yeah, I mean, besides trip over herself. Well, ever since I've known her, she's been trying to trap a man. And somehow or other, the poor Richard thing only seems to frighten them away. I'll see you at the beauty parlor at 11. I'm going to have my fitting now, and then you can help me pick out a hat. Oh, Topper, he's coming. He? He? Who? Be careful, Belma. Don't run into anything. I know. She did. <laughs> oh. Hello, Cosmo. Hello, Henrietta. Hello, dear. Uh, won't you come in? <laughs> uh, uh, Mrs. Topper, Mr. Topper. How do you do, Cosmo? Oh, Cosmo. And this is Mr. Merrill. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Goodness. Oh, no harm done. <laughs> well, I'm certainly glad to meet you two people. <laughs> Heard a lot about you from the little lady. <laughs> uh, let me take your hat. Oh, that's all oh, right. I, 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 I stick it down a moment. Don't, don't be <laughs> nervous, dear. Isn't that a new coat? Yes, brand new. This afternoon. Oh, well, let me help you off with it. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. There we are. Oh, it seems to be stuck. Okay, let me see. Perhaps it's a tad in the lining. Yeah, uh, it's my bag. Your bag. I forgot it was in my hand. Oh, well, let's take a look here. Uh oh. Yeah, it's there, all right. Just a minute. There she blows. <laughs> Come along in, all right. Oh, Ed's so clever. He can fix anything. Now, Thelma, just relax and enjoy yourself. Would you like a martini, Mr. Merrill? Oh, I sure would, but make it, Ed. Ed? Oh, oh, oh you, I, I thought you meant a new kind of martini. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Can I help you? No. Over here, let, let, let me. Uh, uh, what business are you in, Mr. Uh, uh, Ed? Oh, I'm in the insurance game. And you? 
Oh, I, I'm in the, uh, the banking game. All right. It's in business for himself, aren't you, Ed? That's a nice game. I mean, it's nice. Uh, well, it's, uh, it's not that I mind working with other people. But I always say when you're in business for yourself, you can take out the money whenever you want to, right? Well, it's not quite that easy in a bank. Usually someone's looking. That's very good. <laughs> That's very good. <laughs> well, so your insurance. In insurance. Yes, Ed must be wonderful at it. He's already sold me a policy. Well, that's pretty fast work. Well, uh, after the uh, little accident, when the little lady uh, ran into me with the car, I, I thought she'd better take out a little collision policy. And quite right, too. Do you mean to say you've never been insured for collision? Oh, yes. But this is much bigger. How do I look? Fourteen trips to her neighborhood dentist. And now she has the most attractive man in town. What do you think you're doing? Well, well I was just going to pour her a drink. Oh, uh, uh, go ahead. <laughs> One look at her creamy white skin, and everything went black. <laughs> like a dividend? Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> oh, 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 my tongue. What oh. a pity. I'll get a towel. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, let it soak in. <laughs> That's what Jen's for, isn't it? To soak in. <laughs> what happened? Oh, Thelma's trying to drown him with martinis. What a beautiful way to die. Thelma? Oh, George, stop her. No, 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 no. We, we promised not to help. Oh! <laughs> Thelma! Oh, I'm sorry. Oh. Now... No, I, I don't want you folks to get all upset about this. Uh, after all, cocktail sandwiches go with cocktails. <laughs> it's all my fault. I'm so clumsy. Oh, not a bit of it. I'll tell you what you do. I'll, I'll just go home and change my suit, and then I'll be right back to take you to dinner. <laughs> Either he's in love or he's crazy. I never met a sweeter man. Never. He's a phony. He certainly is. I sure think you folks are swell, too. Uh, well, I, I'll be seeing you. Really, Thelma, you must be more careful. Oh, I'm going to be. I just can't let anything happen to me again. I just can't. You better run home and change your clothes, too. You must keep your head off our floor. Oh, it's all right. I'm beginning to get used to it. Wait any of us. We're having breakfast. Come in. Well, go on, Thelma. Stop, Mr. Merrill. Oh, Henrietta, it was wonderful. He's the nicest man. He's certainly the most patient. I hope he didn't have any more accidents. Well, just one little one. It was when he took me home. Oh, Henrietta. He... He did? I can't know. Go on. Well, he he put his arm around me, and then I lost it. His arm? Could happen with Thelma. No, no. My latchkey. I lost it in the bushes. <laughs> what were you doing in the bushes? Oh, we were on the porch. Only I got a little excited when he put his arm around me, and, and I got the key. How did you get in the house? Oh, Ed, Jimmy, would open one of the windows. He's ever so clever. Practice makes perfect. Then having shown you how easy it is, I suppose you sold you a policy against robbery and loss, hmm? How did you know? Intuition. Thelma, do you think it's quite wise to buy all these policies so fast? Oh, yes, Ed said I could be robbed today. Ed should know. No, Topper, I think that's me. Why should Ed want to insure me and then rob me? He was only joking, weren't you, Cosmo? Oh, no, he wasn't. He meant every word of it. And I thought he liked me. I do. I do like you. I, I'm very fond of you. I, I'm devoted to you. I... Oh, no, you aren't. If you were, you wouldn't be so mean about Ed. We're only thinking of your own good, Thelma. Well, I guess I know what's good for me better than you do. And if you don't trust Ed, well, I, I just... I just won't bring him over here anymore. 
I'm afraid this is serious. You better go after her, Henrietta. Tell her I'm heaping ashes on my head. Or even getting into the oatmeal. <laughs> I'm worried. Me too. Wait till you start selling a life insurance. We got to do something and fast. Say, what if... No. Nice try, dear. Say, we could scare him out of the house. I'll tell him with it. Hey, wait a minute. I think I have something. I... Later. Cosmo, I'm sorry I lost my temper. No, Thelma, don't apologize. You are perfectly right. I was? If Ed sold you policy against robbery, he'd be the last person to want to see you robbed. Well, that's what I thought. I'm sure he's only insuring me for my own good. No, Henrietta, we ought to, we ought to be looking over our policies. But we just... Thelma, why don't you ask Ed over to dinner tomorrow night? Then he and I can have a little talk about my insurance situation. Oh, he'd love that. But Cosmo... Well, Henrietta, if you'd rather not. Oh, no, dear. We'd love to have you. What shall I tell him to wear? Well, something waterproof. Tell him not to dress. And look out for that wall. I will. Cosmo, I don't understand you. Then that's what I keep saying. My wife doesn't understand me. And don't try to put me off. You know perfectly well that we bought new life insurance policies only last week. Probably left by now. What are you planning? If it's anything that's going to make Thelma unhappy. You think it's going to make her happy? I don't know. I... I wish we knew him better. Perhaps we will. <laughs> Is that you, Thelma? Yes. Where's your head? Oh, it's all right. This is one day I won't be hit. <laughs> oh, well. Tomorrow is another day. Where's Henrietta? Right here. Henrietta, do you think I should wear the blue or gray dress? I think the blue would be nice, dear. But that's at the cleaners. Well, maybe we could have dinner there. Then why ask me? I sort of hoped you'd say the gray. I think the gray will be fine. Oh, thanks. Thanks. I'll see you this evening. Why, Papa, what are all those papers for? Oh, it's a scrap drive, a big scrap drive. I never heard a word about it. Uh, just in this block. Uh, goodbye, Thelma. Bye. Where's that dog? Oh, he's out. Yeah, he's out in his paper route. He's picking up all the papers in the neighborhood. Well, he brings them to you, doesn't he? Yeah, and now you won't have to subscribe anymore. And what about the neighbors? Oh, you can tell them the news. <laughs> you unjust trained dog. might have a little bonfire. Breakfast out of doors for a change. No, fry our own toast. Toast our own eggs. Cosmo, have you gone mad? Take those papers right out of here. Well, I can't do that. Why not? Uh, well, I, I haven't read them yet. The little lady tells me you've been thinking of taking out some additional insurance. Uh, well, uh, uh, yes, I was sort of Flirting with the idea, yes. Wisest thing you could possibly do. You can never have too much insurance. You know why? Yes. Because no one ever knows what's going to happen to him next. How true. Uh, how very true. How very, very true. <laughs> Your turn, George. I pass. <laughs> now, uh, uh, what type of insurance were you thinking of? <laughs> well, um... I Haven't you men better postpone business until you're alone after dinner? 
I think it's fascinating. Ed's beginning to teach me all about the insurance business. Well, on the way over, Ed was telling me about the most wonderful accident insurance. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, why would you need accident insurance? <laughs> That's very good. <laughs> no offense, honey. Now? No. Cosmo, why do you keep saying no? Well, it's a sort of change from yes. <laughs> no. Ah, see what I mean? I guess you better like your own. <laughs> An ounce of prevention's worth a pound of cure, huh? <laughs> That's an old saying. Yes, and probably before my time. Yeah, and I'll bet you had a time in your time. <laughs> now, yes. Drink up, everybody. I, I think it's time for dinner. <laughs> my bracelet. What about it? I must have dropped it. So, maybe it's on the floor. <laughs> Are you sure you had it on? Oh, I'm positive. I remember Ed admiring it on the way over. Remember, Ed? Yeah, well, maybe it's on the couch. I remember Ed said, I'll bet that dish it cost a pretty penny. It isn't here. I wouldn't worry about it. You're insured. I'm sure it would be all right. Maybe it's in your bag. My bag. What now? Well, that's gone, too. Impossible. Did Ed admire that, too? What are you getting at? I, I just wanted to make sure that she didn't leave it at home. Oh. No, I don't think so. Maybe, maybe the bag is in your coat. Up your sleeve. Well, I don't think so. Well, let's take a look. <laughs> now, the coat's gone. Gone? Gone? But I hung it in there. I know I did. Are you sure you brought it with you? Well, if she's not sure I am, I took it off her. Oh, so you admit it. Uh, well, I mean, I, I helped her off with it. Hmm. Well, the bracelet may have been in the bag. The bag may have been in the coat. Maybe the coat was in something. The coat was in the closet. The closet's in the hall. The hall is in the house. And the house is... No, no, I don't think that'll get us any place. But I can't have lost all those things. It just doesn't make sense. Well, I wouldn't worry about it if I were you. You're insured. Well, I worry. You do. Yes, I do. If you ask me, this was a put-up job. Ed, what do you mean? I mean, I think you and these two are in this thing together. What? Did you hear what he said? Distinctly. Ed, you don't mean that. You can't. Oh, don't play games with me, pretending to be so innocent and so clumsy, getting me to insure you just so you could collect. Just one moment, Mr. Merrill. No, Henrietta, let me. Why? Why, you're nothing but a cheat. You only went around with me in order to get me to buy insurance from you. Well, you can just keep the money. And don't worry about my putting in any claim. I'm just glad I lost all those things. Because it made me find out about you. Uh, you, you, you mean you won't make a claim? Good night, Mr. Meadow. Yeah, well, now, just a moment. Perhaps I was a bit hasty. I... Out. Okay, where's my hat? You sure you brought it with you? Don't start that again. <laughs> so ashamed, bringing that awful man into this house, thinking I liked him. Well, thank heaven this all happened. Yes. But how did it happen? Oh, search me, my dear. I intend to. <laughs> Cosmo, how did that get there? Well, um, um, it, it must have dropped it. Uh, he didn't have a newspaper. Oh, oh yes, he did, dear. I, I remember admiring it. Uh, I, um... If that's Mr. Merrill again, don't you let him in. I should say not. Oh, I don't suppose I'll ever find another man again. I beg your pardon. What can I do for you? I wonder if that's my paper. Not that I care about the paper, but I wanted to make sure I wasn't seeing things. I suppose that sounds rather strange. Uh, not at all. Uh, not a bit. Uh, well, won't you come in? You see, I was passing your house when suddenly the paper was pulled out of my hand. Oh. And the next thing I knew, it seemed to float in your door. I oh. thought maybe it was a dog. Uh, yes, that, that's it. it. It's a dog. But I couldn't see it. Uh, it's a black dog. Very black. I never can see him at night. 
Well, I wish you'd apologize to him. It's last night's paper. Oh, he doesn't care. Anything he can get his teeth into. <laughs> Cosmo! Uh, yes, dear? Cosmo, look. We found it behind the couch. The bag was in the pocket and the bracelet was in the bag. Uh, oh. Oh, uh, Excuse me. Excuse me. Uh, this is my wife, Mrs. Topper. Uh, Miss Gibney. Uh, Mr. Um, uh, Dr. Lang. I've just hung my shingle down the block. Oh. Won't you join us, Doctor? Unless, of course, Mrs. Lang is waiting for you. I'm afraid there isn't any Mrs. Lang. And I'd love to join you. Oh, well, uh, uh, do come in. Cosmo, how did you manage to steal all these things? Oh, I, uh, I had outside help. Uh, no, thank you. Uh, why, thank you. Strange. Uh, please don't bother. I can never make things work either. You can? John W. Lupton, Bernard L. Schubert Production. Produced by John W. Lupton. Starring Anne Jeffries, Robert Sterling, and Leo G. Carroll.